Welcome back to Hyderium Hanger. This is Mike and I'm coming at you with a video about third party RCs and uh, emphasis on Toy World Leia. Toy World Leia is the first Toy World figure that I've gotten and I gotta say that this year is my year of third party and RC is definitely a character that is filled with some third party love. So I want to talk about past present and future of this third party situation with RC and first of all the past is there was no RC in G1 I think that's why this figure is controversial in a way and this figure is also uh, one of the most sought after ones it's uh, for me personally I like her I think it's uh, kind of something we didn't have it wasn't an option we had so the official reason that they didn't make a G1 was because they didn't think that it would sell well. A girl pink Transformer would not sell very well to the boys that collected uh, Transformers predominantly. Uh, the boy market, a boy toy. I mean, obviously, uh, I would not have bought one. I would not have said, hey, this is what I want for Christmas. Although I probably would have picked one up at a garage sale and incorporated her into a, some player scenario or whatever. But it would not have been my favorite toy as a kid. So I think that the market research that they did was accurate. But on the flip side, as an adult collector, if you really want to fill out a uh, shelf for your movie shelf, uh, RC is necessary. She is a main character. And one that uh, I have really been wanting them to make for a long time. So I'm going to start with the first one. That they made. I didn't actually get RC. The sad thing is these third-party ones, as small as they are, as poorly made as they are, they were $100 figures. Uh, this one I got for, I think, $35 or $40. Bucks, uh, and her arm broke. And this is the one from Impossible Toys. And I'm going to show you kind of what's going on. I ordered this off one of those TF Source or one of them. I can't remember exactly which one I ordered from, but I... A, I thought, hey, it's cool because both her guns match. It looks cool. Um, it's the cheaper version because uh, I didn't even actually get an RC. This is all I had is my RC representation for a while. In with some G G1. And I thought, she looks great. She looks good. She's not horrible. You could tell when you look at her, hey, that's an RC version. This is the medic, the whatever... Uh, and Possible Toys is a company that doesn't exist anymore. It's known for everything they did with the Quintessons, the Judge, the Prosecutor, and all that stuff, and, and some other things. So, she's a poorly made toy. And the side I ordered from said there's a lot of QC issues. And I said, oh, hey, I'm going to transform it into a robot and leave it there. Well, one day... I moved things around and decided to transform her back. Transform her back, she broke. And I was super gentle with her, and she broke, and I cannot believe that. So yes, QC issues riddled with this figure. Next competitor came out about a year later, and um, so I'm thinking, I think she came out uh, like around 2010, and around 2011, we got this one here. So this is from iGear and Delicate Warrior. Uh, of course, you can't call it RC. Uh, I really liked about both these third-party companies that they made G1-style packaging. But this one was more G1-style, but kind of Japanese. I mean, we didn't get an Americanized version of this. And she's a little more stout. I like how her legs... I think I've knocked something over in every video, so I'll just leave her down because she's not that great. So this one here looks a little better. Uh, she's a little bit... Uh, the proportions in the hips, I think, fit better, even than Hasbro. Uh, so I think that that was a good option to have back in the day. And of course, we uh, are looking for the best option for everything. And so, iGear was a one-up. Now, of course, when first contender always has some issues. So I'm going to put that out there. And so this one can tighten up. 
But I think that this one here was the most sought after. It was like $100. I think there's a phobia out there. People talking about how much they spent on these things. But this was a $100 figure. This was a $100 figure. And, you know, when you measure her up next to Hasbro's offering for $15, bucks, uh, you, it's not... I knew that Hasbro would put one out eventually that would be close to the quality and close to the scale and look as close to her. Now they went on to make a blue one. I don't know if they made any other colors, but I got this one at a reduced rate. And the funny thing about the blue one is that they didn't even bother changing the packaging. They still have pink. Uh, so the box is exactly the same. The box is exactly the same. The only color thing that changed is the color of the figure. So next I want to get into official offerings by Hasbro. So we have the actual uh, USRC. We have the uh, Legends Japanese RC. And then over here is the Weijing KO Oversize RC. And I didn't even notice, actually, I don't have no idea when her kneecap disappeared. But, you know, you do these videos, uh, you just start seeing these details pop out at you. And... Her kneecap disappeared somewhere, so I'll be looking for that thing, but I'll probably never find it. So when this RC came out, it was a dream come true. And at the time, I actually didn't have any of these other third parties in 2013. And my wife got involved to help me find it. She found one in a town that was probably about an hour away. And that was awesome and I got one off Amazon so for 15 bucks the quality that you get out of this figure uh, she is her joints are tight she has great articulation but she's not perfect I think she's a little bit too hippie I think that they should have done a better job with the hips to where they collapse in so you can like double jointed elbows double jointed hips on RC and so she looks a little bit more in scale and uh, the car modes look great. I mean, I think that the car mode, you can see it right here on the Japanese version, is is wonderful. And, and so um, the backpack was a little bit too much on her, which is why Weijang fixed that uh, by letting you remove part of her backpack so that in robot mode from the front, it looks a little bit better and looks a little more like the character animation model. So fast forward to today, and we've got the Titans Return version of RC, and it was some exclusive. You can get it at Toys R Us. If you're watching this video right now, get it at Toys R Us, 20 bucks. I think they've discounted it cheaper than I paid, so uh, good luck on that bad boy. And so uh, I think that they've really paid some homage to her. They've given her some attention, uh, but in the end, they just tried to come up with another use for the, well, the blur mold, uh, I, I use my kids. Uh, these Half these open ones are my kids. They lost Blur's head. Uh, my older one got Brainstorm, which is the same mold uh, reused. And, of course, he takes a little bit better care of his figures than the youngest one. And so it's a reuse of this mold here. And I think it looks okay but I think it's a little bit too blocky and not as feminine as the classic generations and nowhere near as awesome as this uh, Toy World Leia. So now getting into Toy World Leia herself and I really convinced myself that this Weijang uh, oversized RC was gonna be my masterpiece. And I really think that she's too short. She just is too short. And I think that Fans Toys is going to be somewhere in the, between these two. And I like this Toy World Leia as a robot. Uh, we all know the alt mode is horrible. But I think that someone, somewhere, third party, Perfect Effects, even Toy World themselves, who knows it's an unfinished figure, is going to come out with an add-on piece that you can clip on and will make it look like a real car. I believe that's gonna happen. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but that's my belief. So this figure here, I've watched multiple reviews and videos, and I actually canceled my pre-order and then got it from another supplier. But the uh, tightness 
in the thigh is a true issue. The color variation from the top to the calves, uh, because of the paint and no paint, they painted everything but the calves, is there, but it doesn't bother me. It's not so, if you can see right here, it's not that big of a deal. Now I got mine late. Maybe I got a second production run. I doubt it. But I got mine later than everyone else. I waited uh, and watched reviews and listened to everybody's viewpoints. But I love this figure. I think she looks great. I think she fits, she fills out my masterpiece shelf. And that's really the only reason I bought her. And for 70 bucks, it's not a bad deal. Looking at uh, 100 and plus, so you can pay for fans toys. And fans toys is gonna be shorter. And I actually think this looks better. Um, they didn't follow the IDW. Uh, and I'm not an IDW fan. I don't have anything against IDW or anything negative to say because I think that they do pay homage to G1 more than, say, the Bay movies. So I'm not a huge IDW fan. And I don't really care about the Studio Ox designs. I think she fits the bill for G1 RC in my book. So next I want to talk about these hands that everybody says they have trouble putting in and out. The tolerance on these hands are very tight, but I absolutely had no trouble putting them in and taking them out and adjusting them. So I think that really uh, there's no issue. It's a tight tolerance. It's something that has to be tight. You don't want your hands falling out. Uh, maybe that's been fixed. But I actually kind of like the idea because I'm going to put mine on the shelf and leave them there for an indefinite amount of time. If I decide I want a different pose, I can just slap some different hands on there. So it doesn't really bother me. Uh, but I am a fan of articulated fingers. I love articulated fingers. As long as they don't fall off. As long as they're done well enough, they hold on. So the next thing I want to talk about is how well she fits on a masterpiece shelf. And obviously that's what's most important to me. And probably most important to... Most of you, and I'm going to talk about a few things that I did on this shelf uh, to make it work. But I'm still putting together my shelf. So, first of all, when I put together a masterpiece shelf, I'm thinking I like to have a dynamic pose, something going on, like you just caught them in a battle and you took a picture. That's been how I've always done my masterpiece displays. This is more of they just standing. They're standing there, and they're in a cool, somewhat semi-dynamic pose, and the. I haven't even put the stickers on these guys yet unless I bought them used and they already had a sticker. Uh, I'm waiting till I get them all in. I'm still waiting on Blur. Waiting on some uh, Decepticons because, well, uh, movie shelf Decepticons are hard to come by. So I'm going to kind of throw in this uh, Big Spring here. He's, uh, I think, so far the best that they've come out with aside from the Fans Toys version. Fans Toys version is twice as much. And I think the X Transbot's gonna win. I think the X Transbot uh, is just gonna beat him out. And I just think Fansoys is a little big and bulky. Uh, I'll see what X Transbot's got to offer. Next, I want to talk about um, this Rodimus. I think Rodimus is the best option to display for Hot Rod or Rodimus. Uh, MP09, the US version, is, in my opinion, the best looking. Most fragile easy to break so you know I'll transform them back and forth I put them on a shelf and let them stand there and look good I mean that's what he's there for I did go ahead and put the MP Ultra Magnus but he's way too big for a 9 inch shelf he's doing about a extreme split there but uh, I, f I just couldn't leave my combiner wars up there any longer because he just looked so small compared to Leia haha <laughs> and I couldn't let that happen Next thing I want to discuss is if you look at Toy World Leia and she's taller than Cup, uh, Coot. And if you look at Rogue, she's a little smaller than Coot. And I don't think that's a good enough size for a Masterpiece shelf. I don't think Coot's good enough size for a Masterpiece shelf, but he looks so amazing. I have to have him on there. Until somebody knocks him off and upscales him, which I'll get one then. Or uh, even Fan Toys makes him bigger. Or, or, or. X Transbots comes out with theirs slightly bigger. I think Coot needs to be as big, if not taller, 
than Tesla. I, I think that was a mistake on Fansway's mistake, uh, behalf to make them this short, but we'll see. And I also talked about some Impossible Toys version of RC, and Impossible Toys made a much better version of uh, this guy right here. Uh, this is the Quintesson, and Impossible Toys is really known for those. Those are going for ridiculous money on eBay right now. 100 bucks for something that was 20 uh, 40 and discounted at 20 uh, Looking at bad guys, it's just really hard to find some Masterpiece uh, movie uh, Decepticons. I've got another got Andreas on his way, and then and there's not much else out there. So I'm probably going to throw a uh, Titan Return 6 shot up here and a few other things before I can say that my movie shelf is sort of complete. Lastly, I just want to say that uh, the Toy World Leia is a good figure. She looks great. She fits my needs. So I am the biggest fan. So here at Titanium Hangar, we love this figure. Uh, she's going to stay here. And I'm debating whether I even get the Fan Toys version. And yes, that sounds crazy. That's the second Fan Toys figure I'm debating whether I get. So like and subscribe. And Titanium Hangar. Out.